Hello there, this is Diane from Stamping with Diane in Innisfil, Ontario. My website is here. If you see anything that you like, feel free to shop online. Today's project is going to feature the Seasonal Branches stamp set and the coordinating dies. If you don't have a die cut and emboss machine, no worries. I'm going to show you an alternate that uh, does not require we require the stamp cut and emboss machine. So this uh, seasonal branches has, as you might expect, a couple of branches. It also has three different um, stamps that will layer on top of the branches. So you can make fall, spring, uh, the flowery cards, any kind of combination to take you throughout the whole year. And it's got some great sentiments for birthday, love, thanks, May you feel sheltered in love that surrounds you, sending an abundance of, and then you could fill in love or thanks. You're in my thoughts and get well wishes. So a very, very versatile stamp set. And the dies, there are 19 coordinating dies that come with this set. And there they are. So again, we've got the branches that you can cut just by themselves or uh, around the stamped image, the apple, the flowers, individual leaves, etc. So lots and lots of versatility with this stamp set. So today's project, I'm going to be using our thick ivory paper, very vanilla, sorry. I'm also going to be using the pecan pie and another layer of the very vanilla that's going to come on top. You'll also need some basic white to do some of the stamping. So first off, I'm going to take the pecan pie and I'm going to run it through our die cut and emboss machine using the Timber 3D embossing folder. So as I just pop this into here, run it through the emboss machine and because it is a 3D, you just use the base plate and the top number four layer. Very simple, and it comes out like this. Can you see that texture? All the wood grain of the timber in there. Next step is I'm gonna use our Tuxedo Black Memento ink, and I'm going to use the bird a stamp that comes with that stamp set and just put it on a scrap of my white. Now I often do two just in case <laughs> uh, because we are going to be coloring those and sometimes I change up my mind or whatever so it's nice to have that extra and then I'm also using the same black memento ink tuxedo black to stamp these um, leaves see if I can zoom out a bit so you can see that. There's the leaves and again I'm going to do that twice on just a scrap of the white paper. This is just our, our basic white. And I'm also going to use our blending brush and some balmy blue ink. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that. And that's going to go on our very vanilla layer. So when I'm using the blending brush, I use a circular motion. And then I always rub off on my scrap of paper before going onto the page that I'm actually wanting the image on and I'm just lightly giving this very vanilla just some kind of blue in and around I'm not too worried exactly where it is I want some parts darker than others and I'm trying to get the kind of visual effect of kind of sky because as you see this is going to be a tree okay so I'm happy with that. It's just a bit of the balmy blue there to give the look of the sky. 
Now to clean these uh, brushes, I just run it under some running water right away and it's gonna take Power the blue off. right out of there and uh, I'll be ready for next time. But as you can see already, it's not really transferring the blue. So I do recommend cleaning them up right away though. All right, I live in Ontario and so our fall is starting, we're starting to think about fall. So I've chosen the Cajun Craze. I've got the light here. I've got the light real red and I have both the light and dark of the Daffodil Delight. And I'm gonna show you uh, how our markers can really layer up. <clears throat> so on some of these leaves, I'm just using the Cajun and just kind of following along that main line of the leaf, the veins of the leaf. And I'm not worrying too much about being exact. And then I'm gonna come in with some real red on those leaves as well. And just again, filling in, I'm not trying to fill in the whole leaf just yet. And then I'm gonna come in again with the light of the Daffodil Delight. And now I'm gonna use my circular motion and allow it just to kind of blend in. So I'm not really seeing the bright yellow of the Daffodil Delight. What I'm seeing now is a real kind of rusty color and each leaf is going to be unique just as they are in nature. Each leaf is unique. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this three color method. And sometimes I'm gonna start with the yellow. And sometimes I'll start with the red. Again, reason being, I want these to look unique, just like our leaves are naturally in nature. And I'll come on back and show you how that works. Well, actually, let me go ahead and do the same idea with my bird. So I want him to have a red breast. So I'm gonna color his middle red, but I don't want it just to be all pure red. So I'm gonna come in now. This is our light crumb cake, and I'm gonna fill in his chest with the crumb cake. Now, obviously birds don't look like that, kind of striped look. <laughs> so now I can come in again on top with the red and you'll see that the middle part of the bird does look a little bit different than this outer part. Now, similar idea coming in with a light soft suede, which is a little bit darker. Now, I'm not, I could use pecan pie for this. I'm not worried uh, about totally matching my cardstock color when I'm, when I'm doing my bird. And now I'm coming in again with the gray and blending that. And I want his head to be lighter. So I'm just using the gray, the, sorry, crumb cake on the bird's head and then allowing that darker uh, soft suede to poke through and I'm gonna let his beak pop there with some yellow and how do I feel about that I'd like to lighten this up a wee bit more give a bit more contrast to the belly and I'm happy with that but if I were not I've given myself an extra here now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to die cut that bird using the die and once I finish coloring my leaves, I'll show that to you, but I'm also going to die cut those using the die. And I finished my coloring and I'm really happy with the, it, it almost gives a three dimensional look to those leaves as each one is unique and different. I'm gonna now run these through the die cut and emboss machine using our bird and this one you'll see lines up just perfectly with the leaves. And then I'll run it through a second time over here with these leaves. And I'm also going to run through some of the pecan pie with this very uh, detailed branch. 
So I'm going to use a large and a small. And again, I always run through twice, like too large, too small. And that way, if I make any mistakes or I want to add more detail, I've got all that ready. So I've used the pecan pie. I like to use it as sparingly as possible. And I've ended up with these beautiful detailed um, branches. Here's our bird. Pop him out of the die, and there we've got him all beautifully colored. And finally, the leaves. So lift the die off of that. And there we have all of these leaves, which are going to layer around this branch. So the branch can sit like so, and these leaves will actually line up with the tips of the branches, okay? So uh, I'll show you how that works as we start to assemble. Time to take our top layer of our very vanilla, which we had already used our blending brush and given the idea of some sky. So I'm just gonna play with this a little bit, lay this down. Now you do need to make sure you've got the branch facing the right way up. If you turn it upside down, these leaves will not align. So uh, the leaves, leaves should, yeah, so there we go. It's at this point. These guys are coming off here and you'll see that they come off each of the branches that way. And then I'm going to put one of the smaller branches down here as if it's also coming off from the main trunk. Now, these leaves do not line up with the little guy. So here is where we're just gonna take our snips and we're gonna cut some of these leaves apart that we have die cut out and we'll be able to put them right onto the branches. So cutting apart this, this little grouping of three would be nice right in here. Okay, and this is why I, cu I cut out two and I colored them in the same way so that I've got now flexibility and I can attach these where I want them. Let's put these two over here. Now, the nice thing about this stamp set is it also has an individual leaf and a, does it have the die for the individual leaf? Let's check that. I believe it does. Yes, absolutely. So I could cut out and there's a couple of them so I could run them through multiple times or there are just separate leaves that we could add in in a certain color. But if you can't get these lined up the way you want to, you have the option of adding in some of the individual leaves. But let's see what we can, how we can make this happen just by repurposing this die. So I'm gonna put that one up at the tip. So you get the idea here of how this is gonna to come together. And then what we're going to use to attach this, this is extremely fine, okay? Extremely fine. I've got a little bit of extra white on here, so let's just cut that off. Sorry, hope you can see what I'm doing here. Just cutting off some of that extra white Okay, so this is what we're going to use to glue these down. I've got my silicone mat and I have my fine tip glue pen. And I'm going to use the fine tip glue pen to put the glue on the back of these branches. So I like to run it off, just get it started off to the side and then just kind of run it down the main parts of my branch. Now, if this oozes out, it will dry clear on your card front. You don't want to put too much on though because you really don't want that clear showing if you can help it. But again, just run it off on the side to make sure it's running smoothly and then you'll be set now. Sometimes I let this dry just a little bit 
but I don't have a ton on there today, so I think we're safe to go ahead. And now this was about where I was laying that down. And then I just use my fingers to press that into place. There we go. And then I know I want this small branch to come off to the side. So it might not be easy to see this with the brown on top of the silicone mat, but you get the idea. And then I can use, I could use this fine tip glue on the leaves, but that's not necessary. I tend to save my fine tip glue for these very, very fine pieces. And for this, I'm going to use my white glue. I realized I took the extra black tip off when I took the, the lid off. That's not a problem. It will work as you saw. But I'm gonna put that back on and I might have a little bit, uh, you'll see the better control. Here I've got that black uh, attached there. And uh, it looks prettier. Functionality is about the same, <laughs> but the uh, fine tip just looks a little bit more cohesive when you've got the black tip on there. And then the nice thing about our fine tip glue pen is the lid has this needle so I put my finger down and then the needle goes into that fine tip so that it doesn't uh, bung up on you later. Using my white glue just to dot onto my leaves. And then I can, as you saw earlier, then I will have to layer this around and I can put glue on some of these as well. Just using the white glue, it allows for some wiggle room. The white glue does not dry kind of instantly the way our seal does. So you want to get this planned first. Looks like that's about right. And then I press it into place. Got some of these individual guys to put on. And we're just building out our branches as we go. Okay, I'm very happy with how that has come together and the leaves look quite natural in my opinion over top of those branches. So now I've got a strip of the very vanilla and I'm going to use our, oh gosh, what's it called? Happy pick, pick a punch, pick a, hmm, I have to look that one up for you. And I'm gonna punch the end and give this fun little uh, crinkled look to it. And then I'm going to use uh, a different stamp set for our sentiment today. So I've got our pecan pie, and I've decided to use one of the new stamp sets called the Go To Greetings. It's got happy birthday, thinking of you, just a note, and thank you. But it's got those in a very calligraphy kind of a font, a simpler font, and then even a more simple font. So I love that these are our basic greetings but they come in different font sizes. And to me, you know, it, it just depends on what you, what and who you are sending the card. Okay, so I thought I'd use the Just a Note and I'm using the kind of middle, not too flowery. And I'm gonna use the Pecan Pie and I want it to have this fancy end on it. So I've stamped it first. And now I'm going to snip and put it back through the other way so that we can, I can uh, punch the other end of it too. 
Let me just verify the name on this. You always can see my supply list. There we go. I'm gonna just check the name for you. Yes, I was right. Happy Labels Pick a Punch is what it's called. And that's gonna be sitting on here with some dimensionals. So let's pop two of the larger size dimensionals on here. And then my bird is also going to have a dimensional, so I might as well just use one of the large. And he does kind of have his feet as if they're sitting right on a branch. So let's plan that out. If my label is coming here, then let's put our bird, yeah, maybe on this branch. There he is. Our label's gonna come down here. So as I say, this one is called the go-to greetings because as I say, they are kind of the, the common greetings that we might use throughout the year. And I like that they're all on one stamp set. Okay, so we're ready now just to, this is our scored, this is the thick, very vanilla. And we'll just put these layers together. So our pecan pie is just the regular top uh, first layer, which is five and a quarter by four. And then my very vanilla layer is about an eighth of an inch smaller than that. And that's, oh, I love it. Love that you can peek that through. There we go. So we do have a lot of dimension on there. And we have all these extra uh, little leaves um, that we had cut out before. We've got our extra branches. And I'm just going to put a few of our neutral adhesive back sequins to finish this off. And I, oh, I've got a choice here as to which colors we wanna use. And I'm gonna choose the darker of the browns. One and a couple of the smaller pieces here. And let's put one over here. And now inside the card, might as well use some of these up. So I'm gonna put a little bit of the branch and a couple of the leaves on the inside as well. And that'll finish that off really, really nicely. Okay, so that's gonna be inside. Now, I mentioned at the beginning that if you don't have the die cut and emboss machine, with this stamp set, you can do a very similar look. I brushed the back again using our stamping uh, brush and I stamped the branches on, and then I stamped the leaves on, and I alternated between some of the individual leaves. I did the same idea with our uh, bird, and then I tore this edge just to give a different look to it, okay? And again, embellished using the same uh, neutrals, adhesive back sequins. Okay, so there's the two different versions, one stamped and one die cut. And I hope that you like that project. And again, it is using our seasonal branches, dies, and stamp set. All right, friends, I hope that you enjoyed that and found something that you might want to add to your stamping collection. Bye for now. See you later.